watching Chicky Doodle. Hey kids, how are you doing today? Fancy a nice hot chocolate with marshmallows? <gasps> Me too! Let's start by drawing the face of the cup. The handle. The saucer. Now little bows which are going to go on our marshmallows. Two of those. Let's give them faces too. The rest of the cup. Some eyelashes. Ah, gotta have those eyelashes, you know. Darkening up the border, as usual, because we want to make the colour stand out when we paint it. Brilliant! Starting with yellow and pink for our marshmallow bow. Then we're going for a silvery white colour to paint our marshmallows. To the yellow for the rim of our teacup and the main part too. Carefully painting around the eyes, the cheeks and the mouth. Side to side, small paintbrush head so that you don't go over the black lines. Brilliant brown now for the inside, that's our hot chocolate. Ooh yummy! Going for red for the handle. And the tongue. How about a pink mouth and dark pink cheeks. Pink on the outside of our saucer. Blue on the inside. And red. There you have it. Perfect. A lovely cup of hot chocolate with marshmallows. Yum. kids, we're going to show you how to draw a watermelon. Start by drawing a diagonal straight line and then a semicircle. We're going to do two more semicircles inside that one. One more. And now some little seeds. These are sort of teardrop shapes. Now we're going to thicken up the border. Time to colour in using a red pen, going very carefully around your tiny seeds. Go from side to side, just filling in the gaps along the border. No need to rush, take your time. We're using a pen, but you can use paint if you like, or a colouring pencil, even chalk, whatever takes your fancy. Almost there, you're doing really well. That's it, taking care. Last bit. And done! Woohoo! Finishing touches in that part. Right, time for some green in the next segment. That's right. Do you like watermelon? Me too! It's delicious, especially on a hot summer's day. It's really great for hydrating you, you know. We're using a dark green on the outside, so two different shades of the same colour here to give a lovely depth. That looks awesome, just like a real watermelon. Apart from being full of water, it's also very sweet and delicious and full of vitamins. Yep, it's super good for you. Colouring our seeds. And voila! Hi kids! Today we are going to be drawing and colouring a crab! We're starting by drawing the eyes, two circles, sticks just like lollipops, the pupils. Right, now for the body. Sideways oval shape, 
Now go in for their claws. One on each side. Brilliant. A smile. And let's go for three legs on each side. Bit of decoration. And then we'll thicken up the border. Almost there. Get ready for some colouring. Okay, let's go for red. Crabs can be different colours and we're doing a red one. Use your imagination. So today we're painting, but you can choose however you wish to colour in your crab. A slightly thin tipped paintbrush because we've got to go delicately in between the back lines and around those little oval markings there. And the mouth of course. Do you know how many different species of crabs there are? There are more than four and a half thousand! Whoa, that's a lot of crabs! Most of them live by the coast, obviously. And did you know that they're super old? They showed up during the Jurassic period. That's when dinosaurs were around 200 million years ago. You can get teeny tiny little crabs that are half an inch long, or you can get huge crabs with 12 feet between its claws, like the Japanese spider crab. They have this hard, what we call an exoskeleton, and it protects the soft tissue underneath. And did you know that crabs walk and swim sideways? They eat meat and plants, so they're omnivores. Now we've almost finished painting in the legs and the upper half of the body. You'll see why we've left the, the bottom half empty. Because of this, we're going to paint it orange. It gives a lovely two-tone effect and kind of looks like the crab's tummy, since it's a slightly different colour. It's these subtle things that make a big difference, you know? And just sort of blurring it in a bit. There! We're going purple for the eyes. And there we have it! Hello kids! Something smells fishy to me. That's because today we're going to learn how to draw fish. An oval shape for the body, a little heart for the mouth, a curvy line to separate the face, a fin on top, an eye, a fin underneath, and a tail. There you go. Now once you've mastered this fish, you can draw several others. We're going to do a couple more, varying sizes. Give it some dimension in the picture. It will look like some are either smaller or larger, or some are further away from you or closer to you. You can make them slightly different to each other if you want. Give it some variety. And if you want to practice more at drawing this fish shape, then you just need to pause the video and do one step at a time, no need to rush. Right, there we go. We're ready to colour. Colouring in the first fish with a lovely blue colour. Just doing the back half of the body. Using a lovely fine tipped pen yellow fins. Wow, look at that colour contrast. Fantastic. Red face. So you can go as bright or neutral as you like with this. I love bright colours. There we go. And a pink mouth. An orange tail. So we've got five colours in one fish. Go crazy, why not? 
We're going for a different blue for the backside of the second fish. It's more of a aquamarine colour, you could say. An orange face instead of red. So using similar colours. Brown fins. A purple tail. That's it, almost there. Brilliant! A pink mouth, but brighter pink than the first fish. This last little fish, we're going to do a peachy face. A purple backside. Orange fins. A green tail. Hmm, and a red mouth. They've got some similar colours which kind of link them all together, but yet they're all slightly different as well. Drawing some bubbles around each one's mouth now because don't forget they're underwater. We'll colour those in blue. Excellent. Wow, this is looking amazing. Give the fish some scales by doing little sideways curvy lines. Using a black pen to do this. There you go! Perfect! Hi kids! Today we are going to learn how to draw and colour in a rocket. Start by doing a kind of long lemon shape with a slice cut off the bottom. Then we'll do a line across the top to section that off and two circles for the eyes. Colouring in the pupils, leaving a little bit of shine. A sideways smile. Some eyebrows the tummy, which is also our window. A little bit of decoration. How about a lightning bolt? We're doing the bottom part now. Adding our booster. And the flame, of course. And then we'll thicken up the border. Ready to color. Let's go for red for the top section. Red for rocket. Starts with the same letter. R. R. We're leaving a little section here which we won't colour in because it's going to look like it's a shiny red rocket. Brilliant. Now let's do the next section. Yellow. We've got a very fine tipped pen here. You can of course paint if you want or use pencils. We are just being very careful so that we don't colour over our black lines and into the bits that we don't want to be that colour, like the eyes and the mouth. So take your time with this, no need to rush. And you can always pause the video if you need to. Excellent, good job. Now imagine if you had a space rocket, where would you go? Would you go to the moon? Maybe collect some cheese? Would you go to another planet? Or would you explore deepest, darkest space? Or where would you go in your space rocket? Let us know in the comments below. Brilliant. Let's go for green. And done. Now blue. That looks great. Let's do these bits blue too. Isn't it amazing that human beings have created this wonderful rocket machine that can take us into outer space? Could you ever imagine leaving the Earth and seeing the Earth down below you? Would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Orange for our flame. Almost there! Yes! Let's go for a yellow in the middle. And some pink for our window. There you have it! 
kids, how are you today? We are going to draw and paint a bunch of grapes. Fantastic, it's one of my favorite fruits. How about you? Now it's really easy because all you need to do is draw loads of circles side by side. You can just draw freehand like we're doing here or if you like, you could use say the bottom of a glass or a pot to trace around to get a perfect circle shape. So we keep layering these circles, these grapes, until we end up with a kind of lopsided upside down triangle shape. We're adding a stem and a leaf. And then we'll thicken up the border, nice thick black, and in between the grapes too, I think. This is going to make the color of the grapes really stand out. That's it. Excellent, ready to paint. We're going for purple. Of course, there are many different varieties of grapes. You can do whatever color you like. We're doing a lovely purple or otherwise known as black grapes. They are some of the sweetest varieties around. If you want to be really creative, you can do rainbow grapes, make it interesting. So we're painting, but you can obviously use coloring pencils or pens or whatever you like. Here are some facts that I bet you didn't know about grapes. Grapes are actually berries. That's right, the word berry actually meant grape in Old English. Bet you didn't know that one. Grapes have been around for 65 million years. Can you believe that? Wow, that is a long time. People have been cultivating grapes for about 8,000 years. And guess what? There are 8,000 different varieties of grapes. <laughs> yep, I bet you just thought there was green, red and black, right? One serving of grapes provides 27% of your daily vitamin C. And you know what vitamin C is good for? Your immune system. It keeps you healthy and strong, stops you getting sick. So grapes are a very good addition to your diet. I definitely recommend you eat some. Just make sure that you cut them in half lengthways before you eat them because grapes are also unfortunately very easy to choke on. Almost done. Finishing touches. Now let's do the stem, we'll do that brown. And a green leaf. Lovely contrast with the purple, don't you think? That's it. Carefully going inside all the black lines. Let's add a bit of shine. We're using white paint, just a little stroke on each grape. Makes them look all shiny. And there you have it, a bunch of grapes. Well done. Hello kids, how are you today? We are going to be drawing and colouring a ladybug, otherwise known as a ladybird in the UK. We start by drawing three half circles just like this and then joining them up together with some curvy lines. Circles for eyes. And the antennae. Excellent. Now we always like to thicken up the black border because it makes the colours stand out once you colour it in. There you go. Time to draw our spots on. Four on each side. But really, you can do as many as you like. Great, let's go for yellow for the head. We're using colouring pens for this, but you can use paint or crayon or even pencils if you like. A lovely bright colour that is. Yay, blue for the eyes. And let's go for red for the main body. Carefully colouring around those spots. Now I know that when we think of a typical ladybug, we think of red with black spots, right? But if you want to get really creative, you should know that there are in fact 5,000 species of these tiny insects and they all come in a variety of colours. Some have spots, some even have stripes and some have no markings at all. 
You can even get black ladybugs with red spots. Orange, yellow, brown, all different colours. So choose your favourite one. They're really great to have around because they actually eat quite a lot of pests who steal our crops and ruin our food in the farms. They eat fruit flies, mites, things like that. And did you know that the ladybird actually hibernates in the winter just like a bear? That's right. Bet you never knew that. They've actually got spots to warn off predators so that they don't get eaten. So having these spots on their back tells the predator, hey, look, I don't taste too good. That's it, we're done with the red, going for a pink now. And how about some orange? This is where we get nice and colourful. Green next. Beautiful. And pink. So the red part with the spots actually have hidden wings underneath them. Yes, that's right. Ladybirds can fly. We're colouring our spots in brown. You can do black if you like. Doing fantastically well and you're almost there. Last one. Woohoo! You did it! Ooh, hi chef! What's cooking in the kitchen today? Fruit? Yes ma'am. Got the rumpus? I think she wants you to make something. Okay ma'am. Got it? Excellent! What's it to be then? Ooh, a cooking pot. Some ingredients. Mmm, smells delicious. Oh, you're going to heat it in the microwave then, Chef? Well, okay then. This is exciting. I wonder what it's going to be when it's ready. Smells delicious. So, what now then, Chef? Oh, now in the freezer, I see. Oh my goodness, it's ice cream. Delicious. Ooh, red. Pink. And purple. Wow, I hope you enjoyed that, Mr Chef. You certainly earned it. Hello again. Are we going to cook something else? Exciting. What will it be? Yes, ma'am. I think she's trying to tell you. Okay, ma'am. Excellent. We get the cooking pot. And the ingredient. Ooh. Should we give it a stir? Mmm, yummy smell. In the microwave again. Yay, let's heat it all up. It's ready. Is it going in the freezer again, chef? It is. Let's get it nice and icy cold. Is it ready? <gasps> wow, look, more ice cream. Oh my goodness. Yellow ice cream. Ooh, blue ice cream. And green. Yummy, yum, yum, yum. Bye, chef. Thank you.